You ask anyone who grew up in my age group to name a game for the Sega Genesis, and they will immediately say Sonic the Hedgehog. Before he was a gaming icon, he was Sega's answer to Nintendo's Mario, quickly became their mascot, and sparked a cultural revolution for video games. Not only did Sonic appear in advertisements and movies, but he also got his own cartoon. The original Sonic the Hedgehog was one of my favorite games for the Genesis, and I love so many elements of the game, such as the speed with which he moved, the cool platforming effects never used in a game before, as well as the fact that there were so many branching paths that would lead you to the end of the level. Sonic the Hedgehog was a major hit for Sega, and they produced many sequels that were all excellent, and spin-offs that were... well, some were okay. There is no denying that every Sonic the Hedgehog game on the 16-bit era was good, but the question keeps coming up, which was the very best? This debate has gone on between gamers for a very long time, with the argument always coming down to which is better, Sonic 1 or Sonic 2. I know most people will immediately say it's Sonic 2, and it's hard to argue with them as the Sonic games are all so close on the Genesis in terms of the gameplay, graphics, and music. It's almost too hard to choose a title that stands out from the rest. But maybe that's just because people are limiting their choices to games for one system. Maybe there was another true Sonic the Hedgehog game made for one of Sega's most reviled systems. And just maybe, it might be the best game in the series. Sonic CD. Remember all those great games we used to play growing up in the 80s and 90s? Most of them are sitting in an attic or garage somewhere, doing nothing but gathering dust. My opinion is, we should give them another look. Yeah, there was another Sonic game made in the exact same style as the Genesis releases, and it's really good. I bet you were asking why no one really ever talks about it in the same rarefied air as the Genesis releases. Well, that's because it was on the Sega CD, a system not really known for quality games. The Sega CD was released in North America on October 15, 1992, to glowing reception from critics as it was even named Electronic Gaming Monthly's Best New Peripheral for the same year. The CD technology wave was in full swing as most people were switching from cassettes to CDs as their music medium of choice, which could also be played right on the system, so it was logical to think that this $299 add-on for the Genesis was the next big thing in gaming. But unfortunately, the game's release for it did not live up to the hype. The system, while impressive, saw a flood of full motion video games enter the market, and while these games seemed incredible at the times, as graphics couldn't stand up to video obviously, they weren't fun. Most games were nothing more than a very low resolution movie playing out before your eyes with a few action commands that would change the direction of the movie. While most people were focused on the FMV games, the system was known for a few games that did focus on the system's best aspects by enhancing the graphics and adding CD quality soundtracks. Sonic CD was one of the games that understood the true power of the system and created a Sonic game that really was a step above the rest. But unfortunately, most people never saw past the awful reputation the FMV games created for the system, and it faded away just as an afterthought, with most gamers never bothering to even give it a chance. And it's because of that stigma that no one really knew about Sonic CD back then, which is a real shame because not only might it be the best game on the Sega CD, it might just be the best game in the Sonic franchise. I was one of the lucky people who had a Sega CD growing up. Like many of the others, I was easily attracted to the prospect of playing FMV games and had no idea of the system's true potential. That was until I took a trip to Radio Shack in 1993 and picked up my copy of Sonic CD. I was already a huge fan of the franchise having owned Sonic 1 and 2 since I first got my system so I thought I would give Sonic CD a shot. Well it was easily worth the gamble as I immediately fell in love with it. The game starts off with an amazing opening. The 
title track is called Sonic Boom and composed by Spencer Nielsen and performed by Pastiche. It showcases the amazing music of the game that the CD capabilities created. But we will get more into that later. If you allow the opening to play, you will see a short FMV cartoon of Sonic the Hedgehog that loosely represents the story of the game, where Sonic arrives at Never Lake to find that the little planet is chained to a mountain and mechanized by Dr. Robotnik. At this point, Robotnik sends Metal Sonic to kidnap Amy Rose, and Sonic must traverse past, present, and future on the little planet to rescue her. I thought this was an amazing story growing up, and let's be honest, the cartoon showing Sonic running up that chain was pretty badass. But it was the inclusion of Metal Sonic that really hooked me. He looks so cool on the cover, and I couldn't wait to come face to face with him in the game. And this is where things get interesting. I bet you're all saying, wait a minute, Metal Sonic was in Sonic 2. That he was. Well that's because Sonic 2 and Sonic CD were supposed to be one in the same game. I've always found there to be a huge difference in the feel of the game between Sonic 1 and 2. I myself prefer the original, as I always thought that Sonic CD was a return to form from the first game. Turns out I was right, but also very wrong. Sonic 2 was in development at Sega when lead programmer Yuji Naka grew dissatisfied with the rigid corporate policies at Sega and moved to the United States to work with the Sega Technical Institute, along with several members of Sonic Team, to develop Sonic the Hedgehog 2. Development of the original game continued, led by Sonic creator Naoto Oshima, and developed into something different and what we today know as Sonic CD. Sonic CD features seven levels with three stages in each, much like the original game. Where this game differs and becomes truly special is that each stage can be played in three different time periods. That's right, three different time periods with its own unique atmosphere and music. You can alter the time period of your level by passing a swinging sign on the stage that will say, past or future. Once you pass one of these signs and build up continuous momentum, Sonic will shift through time through the magic of a very cool cutscene, and the level will reopen where you were in the new time period. While I think that this is a very cool mechanic and could add to the replay factor, for me it's one of my biggest annoyances with the game, and I spend the majority of my time slowing down so I don't time shift. It's funny, in a game centered around speed, I'm constantly slowing down. But it's not just the time travel mechanic that makes this game stand out next to the Genesis releases. The power of the Sega CD allowed for one of the most beautiful and best sounding games in the series. I know, I know. <laughs> Before you judge me for putting this game on a mantle because of its aesthetic properties, hear me out. Let's face facts here people, Sonic is Sonic. No matter if you add on a time travel element or annoying partner that is more distracting than helpful. Oh damn you Tails, damn you. The core game hasn't changed much. The only real difference between each for me was the graphics and sound, and there is no denying that Sonic CD is head and shoulders above the rest. Graphically, Sonic CD was beautiful, delivering amazing levels with background detail like never seen before in a 16-bit platformer. I especially liked the clouded and ominous background of Stardust Speedway. The character models were perfect, and neither Sonic or his nemesis Dr. Robotnik have ever looked so good. The music for me is where it became really special. Unfortunately, there are significant differences between the soundtracks in North America and the rest of the world. I have only experienced the North American version, so that is what I intend to focus on. The North American version of Sonic CD's soundtrack was composed by Spencer Nielsen, and was CD quality through and through, which fits so perfectly with each level and is some of my favorite video game music of all time. The best part is the music can be listened to right off the disc as a normal CD. So feel free to pop it into your car and drive around listening to the mechanical themed Metallic Madness level. Unfortunately the game isn't the most challenging in the series, and some would even say it's too easy. But mostly that is a component of the game featuring unlimited continues where others didn't. This again is an element of the CD drive as the backup data is stored in RAM, and not only can you continue, but you can also walk away from the game and start at the level you last left off on. Before you jump on that, remember there were level skip codes in the Genesis Sonic games that let you do the exact same thing. While this game doesn't seem as hard, it difficulty lies in its uniqueness. The challenge on some of the levels is maddening, such as in Wacky Workbench, where the electrified floor will send you skyward into an almost unescapable maze unless you deftly maneuver the moving platforms. Or it's so easy to get lost in the maze of walkways and start a speedway, unless you know the correct path and can avoid the obstacles. You could be circling for hours. The real challenge is in the game's boss fights, as most aren't your typical platforming fear of landing on the boss's head. There is one where the challenge is to avoid obstacles coming from the ceiling while the platform Robotnik is on gets grinded away. 
to that face-to-face -face confrontation that I mentioned earlier with Metal Sonic that ends up being a race with dire consequences for the loser. It may be considered easier than the typical Sonic game, but that differential challenge from level to level is what makes it truly special and will keep you engaged for the hour plus it takes to finish the game. Sonic CD used the Sega CD in the right way, creating an amazing 16-bit game with stunning graphics, beautiful music, and one of the most unique and enjoyable experiences in the franchise. Is it the best game in the franchise? I think it is, but that's completely subjected to the person experiencing it. Hopefully after watching this review, you'll want to take the leap and try it for yourself.